It's a motherfucking Mario Maker. Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to the Game Skates. Today and only today, actually not only today, because we're going to talk about this over several days. We are going to talk about Mario Maker 2. So, man, this game's been out for a couple of days now. And again, while I'm not fully ready to review the game for you guys, what I'm going to do is I want to kind of have separate discussions about different parts of the game. Because there's a lot to talk about this game, right? There's three major components. The level editor, the online courses in general, and the story mode stuff. So, and then like multi, like multiplayer and like gameplay and all that stuff. So, so I want to kind of separate discussion so that's not all overwhelming. I want to be able to focus on one aspect of the game because there's a lot to talk about when it comes to this game, right? So, I thought today actually I'd talk about the level editor, right? So, first of all, I just want to say I'm fucking addicted to this game, as you all know. I've probably played over like 20 something hours already and I'm just in love and addicted. So, but today we're going to talk about the level editor, right? So this time around in Mario Maker 2, the level editor is the same as the first one, but 78 times better. By 78 times better, I mean a couple things. First of all, we've got way more themes, right? In the first game, we had like four themes, kind of. Now we finally have the desert theme. We have a snow theme. We have a forest theme. We have a sky theme that isn't the same as the, as the fortress theme. We've also got a... Um, What's the other fucking theme I'm missing? There, there's another theme in there, but it's like we finally got more themes and the game feels more complete and real. Like, now you can really make a game that feels like a Mario adventure because you're not limited. Like, you don't feel like, why is the desert not here? Why is the snow area not here? Like, there were key areas in the first one where things were just missing and that wasn't good. Like, I just felt like that was lacking, right? And also now, we got motherfucking slopes. Now, obviously, we've seen this from trailer one. They know that slopes are important to us. And they really make levels just feel so much more natural, right? A big part of Mario games is slopes, right? Because not every level should just be a straight line. There should be some, like, ups and downs going on. And that really makes your level feel more organic and alive. So... And then you can have like kind of tilted uh, slopes or like really tilted slopes. So you've got a lot of options there. And again, it just helps make levels feel more natural, right? Because now whenever I go online, I see people who are making levels that feel very Nintendo-like, right? And what I really love about the level editor is now all the items are placed in these kind of wheels, right? So basically like items will have their own separate wheels. Enemies will be in their own separate wheels. You select one. It's all fucking lovely. It's like the way it's so well organized and so well done is really cool. And... What I love about it is everything just feels, everything feels like, it's not explained to you, but like, it feels very clear. The first game had this kind of, it was a kind of cool mechanic, but it was kind of annoying where you had to shake every enemy to see what different modes they had. Here you just kind of hold them and then you can see the other options they have. Or like, in the first game you had to drag a mushroom onto an enemy, so that would mean you have to go on the wheel to grab the mushroom to go put on an enemy. Whereas here, like in the options screen, it'll have like, do you want a big enemy or a small enemy? So they really do a good job of yeah, of streamlining the creation process, making it so it's easier for you. Levels are also bigger, right? Like you can actually have bigger size levels. Another thing that I adore is vertical sub areas. This is another major thing that wasn't in the first game that changes a lot about how people make levels. So now you can have levels that go upwards, right? So for the for Mario Maker 1, you could only have... Uh, What's it called? The horizontal sub areas. Now you can finally have vertical ones. And this is actually really cool because now people can make shit like, I don't know, like tower levels. Like you're climbing up a tower or you can, uh, what's it called? Or you can have like rising lava as like Mario's trying to jump and escape from it. And it's like the amount of new kind of level design mechanics you can have in there just thanks to vertical levels has been fucking amazing to see online, right? So that's also a really cool addition. <clears throat> you've got a ton of new items. You got the Angry Sun. You've got the motherfucking. You got the Mario 3D World enemies, which are really cool. I'll get to the 3D World style because that's like it's a whole, it's a whole thing right there. And what I really love is just, especially the on and off switches. Oh my god, on and off switches, guys. They've changed the game. I love how it's such a simple addition. So basically, you have these on and off switches. When you press them, it makes platforms appear and disappear, right? So once it's on, the red platforms appear. Once it's off, they disappear. So this has created an unbelievable amount of variety in level design, right? I just feel like I've seen people use this mechanic so well and so much because I'll see people like now they'll just do a thing where they have a level where a shell is just popping left and right while the buttons are being pressed over and over and you kind of have to platform through it and it's just creating some really crazy insane level design ideas and I really love that right 
you've got a bunch of new you've got a bunch of new enemies you've got boom boom in there you've got a ton of stuff i don't need to go over all the enemies but just know that you have a shit ton of options from platforms to enemies to keys to items to red coins and it's just like it's just created a fucking incredible what the fuck uh check outside it just created an incredible fucking level of depth that you can create with these levels so the new biggest addition though is the 3d world style why is this truck making so much sound the 3D World style. Now, the 3D World style is actually different than the other ones, right? So, Mario Bros. 3 and uh, you and World all interact with each and Mario 1 all interact with each other and have different parts that look different. 3D World is in its own separate category because it feels really different. Obviously, we'll get into the gameplay another time of how that feels, but it feels really great. But, like, the, basically, the 3D World style has kind of more unique elements, right? Or, like... 3D world style elements. So for example, you'll have Cat Bowser only in 3D world style. And he's really cool because he can kind of go in the background. You can have like bullet bills, which are like giant bullet bills that come at you from the background. You can have uh, those glowing platforms from 3D world that through that go ding 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 and then switch. So it's like you've got some really cool elements in there. Cat suit's really dope, and you've also got these like climbable walls. Like I just really love how they just do a really smart job of making 3D World stand out. And again, in the level editor, it's still the same mechanics and ideas, but again, the options you have there are really unique and cool. Now, I will say there are some limitations because again, the other four options have so many tools and options. And obviously, because 3D World is an exclusive style to itself, I wish there were more options from the other styles that you could have in 3D World. Like, there's some that, that aren't there and it doesn't even make sense. Like, it's like, you can't just have a spiky floor in, uh, what's it called, in 3D World, but you can in other ones. Why? And, like, the on and off switches, why can't you have them in 3D World, but you can have them in the other ones, even though 3D World does have an on and off switch? So, there's some really weird stuff like that where it just feels like, I think with updates and stuff, it'll get even better, like, they'll add stuff. But it does feel like, while 3D World stands out with new, like, backgrounds and new enemies and new, like, mechanics that feel fresh, the editor for it, like, has some missing tools that I think are gonna get added over time to make it even better. Yeah, so, overall, those are my intro thoughts on the level editor stuff so i really do think it is important for you guys to just try it out because i've seen a lot of people just experiment and play with the level editor this time around right i don't feel like people are scared to make levels or intimidated i've seen so many people on social media trying out their own levels trying to like get in there and the trick is honestly just go in and mess around okay like do make a level big small add enemies throw things in like once you're in that editor and you've kind of started getting that mindset you start to get ideas that flow in your head it is not as hard as you think it is and obviously i've seen a ton of creative levels and again you can be really creative with this game because it's mario inherently it's supposed to be fun unless you're making really trolly levels which i mean whatever that's fun too you can make something really fun and really cool it doesn't have to be crazy it can just be like a regular mario level it doesn't it's just make your levels try it the editor is smooth also one more thing uh from handheld to tv i don't mind using the tv to make levels but i would 1000 percent recommend doing it in handheld mode getting a, a touch screen pen like a passive 10 you, pen you can get it from like amazon or some shit or even probably a store doing it on handheld mode is way easier because like let's say you want to select a bunch of enemies you kind of just like drag the thing you pull them here you tap things you like scroll through it's like using the touch screen is way more more like not intuitive intuitive that's the word i'm looking for as opposed to a tv where you are kind of like you have a cursor then you have to use the d-pad to switch to the to the items on top and then you have to it's like it's a little more complicated i don't mind it but i'd rather build things in the handheld mode and that's probably a better idea for you too so anyways those are my thoughts on the level editor can't wait to tell you more next time about probably story mode well story mode i want to get a little farther so i'll probably talk about online courses and all that stuff next time so thank you all for watching stay tuned and i'll see y'all next time remember twitch streams on monday wednesday friday youtube videos tuesday thursday saturday all right so anyways that's it peace out thank you all for watching i'll leave a lot of